Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Grub. Um, and there's a reason for doing this. Uh, I have Zorin installed, and the problem with Zorin is that it boots straight into Zorin without showing a Grub menu at all. Now, some of you might think that's a good thing. It just goes straight in. You can just type your password in and you're into Zorin. Um, but there is a bit of an issue. Um, if you need to do anything to rescue your system, for instance, you've forgotten your password, your user password, then um, by not being able to get to the Grub menu, you can't then get to the sort of like recovery settings in order to change the password and get yourself back in. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you, you a tool. Uh, if you go to your software center, uh, this tool should be available for uh, most distributions. I'm using um, Zorin. And we're looking for Grub customizer. There you go, Grub Customizer, and you customize the bootloader. So we're going to install that. It's coming from the Ubuntu Focal Universe, so um, if you're a Ubuntu user, it's definitely available for you or any derivative of. Uh, so that's installed, so you can now either launch from here or you should be able to type there. So I'm going to launch it from there and I'm going to Type in my password. I'm going to minimize this one. And so this is the Grub customizer. So um, if you're not aware, Grub is the menu that appears when you first boot up a Linux distribution. Now, if Zorin is your first choice ever, then you may not have seen the menu because it automatically appears. And the reason for that is if you go into general settings, the boot default entry is after zero seconds. So in order to get into um, the um, recovery, um, you'd have to be hitting the escape key really, really quickly so you can get that menu to appear, which you don't want to do. So um, I recommend setting it to five um, seconds. That gives you five seconds to go in there. I mean, uh, it what's five seconds to you in a, in a boot time? If, if, if it's that precious, then set it to one or two seconds um, but if you ever did forget your password then uh, or you need to get into recovery for any other reason um, you'll thank me for doing this at another point in time so we're going to change this to five now what you also want to do is go to appearance settings and click on advanced settings um, because the club timer style is set to hidden uh, so if a couple of things you can do here. You can change that to be menu, or you can uncheck it entirely. So I've changed it to be menu. Timeout is five, uh, and we'll, we'll leave the rest for now. And click close on that, and then we'll save. Now, when you reboot your computer, you just see this menu. And this is important, and I'll show you why it's important in the next video. Um, you'll see coming after this one. Um, but you might think it's uh, made the boot process longer, but it will help you in the long run. So I, I totally recommend doing this. Um, just to get into Zorin, just click the top menu item. So um, I'm back into the Grub Customizer now. And so when you looked at the menu, you saw three items, and it looked like this. Zorin, Advanced Options, and Firmware Settings. Uh, Zorin obviously takes you into Zorin, which is what I'm in now. Um, we'll go for Advanced in a minute. And your Firmware Settings will enable you to um, go into your um, bootloader settings, your UFE menu, so you can um, switch between um, EFI and uh, standard MBR mode. You can do other things. You can reset computer and stuff like that. So, all this, all the sort of like BIOS settings um, in there. Um, but under this advanced options, you'll see that there are two. Well, there's four options. So this uh, one for this uh, Linux kernel, and then one for this Linux kernel. So every time a Linux kernel gets installed, if something goes wrong with the latest Linux kernel. And Zorin will always use the latest one. What you can actually do is now you've got the Grub menu. If something's going wrong with that, whilst you're waiting for a fix, 
I mean, it's, it's unlikely. But whilst you're waiting for it fixed, you can go down and fall back to another uh, Linux kernel. Not only that, you can also go into the recovery mode. And uh, my next video along is going to show you how to reset your password um, using recovery mode. So it's important that you have these options available um, and you need to do it before you need recovery mode. So you, you need that grub menu to appear now. Otherwise, it's a bit trickier to um, change your user password if you don't have the grub menu available because you can't get to that recovery mode. You'd have to boot into a live system and then change into the the system that's installed on your um, hard drive or SSD. So that, that, that's trickier. So it's much easier if you've got this recovery mode available. Now under general settings, you've, you've seen that I've changed the length of time to five seconds, uh, but you'll see other things that um, this offers. So you've got one, does it show a menu or not, which you, you definitely want it to do. Uh, it'll look for other operating systems. So if you try to dual boot Zorin and Windows at some point, or Zorin and another operating system, and you've lost the other operating system in terms of you can't see it in the menu, it may still be installed on your drive, it's just not being picked up as part of Grub. So by having that checked, um, when you hit that save button there, it's going to rebuild your Grub menu. And if there are other operating systems available, it's going to put it back into the boot menu. So it's always worth having that checked. Um, you can change the choice of which option is the first one selected. So by default, it's going to be the first one, which is Zorin. But if, say, you had Windows down there somewhere, you could make Windows the um, preferred choice. Um, not sure why you would, but you, you could. Or if you find that Zorin isn't booting properly and you need to, um, for a time, go to one of these other kernels, you could make that the default until such a time as the latest kernel works properly. Um, you can change the look and feel of your Grub screen. Um, so you can change the font color, the whether the background's transparent or not, um, things like that. And you can also set a background image now, choosing a picture from your own hard drive um, from your home folder isn't a good idea. What you want to do is um, put the, f the picture into your boot grub folder, because then it's going to be visible to grub at the point of loading. So if you're using a file manager, that's not so easy to do. So I'm going to show you how I did it. So in my, uh, I'm going to cancel from here. Uh, in my files here, you'll see that I've got a pictures and I've got a folder called Grub Screen and then a picture there. So what I did was open the terminal and I went into my pictures folder, into my Grub Screen folder, and I did sudo cp star.jpg because I've only got one picture in there. If you've got more than one picture, you probably want to limit it to the one that you want to use. And then I went to boot, grub, and then dot. And then that's put that into... And you can see I've got a picture in there. So now, in Grub Customizer, what I can choose is within boot grub, I can choose that image. Now, the thing about this is the picture is quite light, so I'm going to need to change the font color. So you can change the size for a start, so we can make it, uh, I don't know, 22. And you can choose either regular or bold. Select like that. Now it's saying about large fonts, so we are going to change that back um, to what it was before, and we'll just choose a font, I think. Let's go for that one. I have no idea what it is. Uh, but we can take the font back down to a 12. And it's not complaining about that at all. Um, but we need the font color. So we're going to say black. The highlighted one, um, we want a dark, so we go dark gray. 
So that's what I'm going to choose, and we'll see how it goes. You can always mess around with it again after. Hit save. Close that. If you hold shift in the, the menu button, it brings up the restart, by the way. As you can see, I have a grub menu appearing, and you can see Zorin's listed at the top like that. So that's how you customise your um, grub menu. It's worth noting that I had to amend the font again because it said it was too big. Uh, it doesn't break um, your grub menu in the sense that it'll still work, it just defaults to the most basic grub screen available. So um, if, if you mess it up, don't worry too much. Uh, if you're um, messing around with the fonts, it will just default to um, a standard setting. And that's really the end of the video in terms of um, this Grub Customizer thing. The important message to come out of this is the fact that you should make it that a Grub menu appears for every Linux operating system you use because it helps you get into the recovery settings if you need to get in there. And my next video, which follows on from this one, and you'll see the link um, appear, um, shows you a good reason why you want that grub menu to appear. And that's it. So thank you for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.